one of the stories about the science fiction writer Philip K. Dick, and there are a lot of stories about Philip K. Dick, but one of the stories that, um, in a kind of biography of him called I Am Alive and You Are Dead, it tells of this uh, experience he had where, let me get this right, he went into, he's always been troubled, had some sort of mental problems for K. Dick, or he was a sort of troubled individual in that regard, and uh, possibly delusional. But one of these delusions, if that's what it was, that he had, was he went into the bathroom of his house and uh, reached for the switch on the wall. It was dark, and he was reaching for the switch on the wall. For some reason, he couldn't find it. He scrabbled around with his hand and just couldn't find the switch. And then his hand happened to brush against um, a pull switch that was hanging where the usual switch was. And he pulled it and the light came on. And at that point he remembered, oh yes, it's a pull switch in this house, not a, not a finger switch. And what, what that, how he interpreted what had happened to him there was that... Um, this experience indicated that he was actually living, he thought, two lives at the same time. This is his interpretation. That on a kind of, you know, on a parallel track in his, of his life, there was a Philip K. Dick who lived in an identical house with an identical bathroom, except that the bathroom in that house had a switch on the wall rather than a pull switch. And that somehow the memories of that parallel Philip K. Dick had kind of leaked across and he'd made the actions and uh, reached for the switch that was appropriate to that track of existence, not the one that he habitually lived in. And that strange interpretation, that, con that conviction that he started having at that point in, in which he was living in two worlds simultaneously stayed with him uh, for most of his life. He made a number of references to that um, odd duality of living. Um, this is prior to him, at the end, towards the end of his life, believing that he was the reincarnation of Jesus and that he was in touch with canine intelligence, intelligences from Sirius, the dog star. But uh, up until that point, he's delusions had this very um, specific form that he was living two lives simultaneously. Another aspect of Philip K. Dick's life which also uh, had this sort of dual quality and which isolated him and was again probably delusional was um, captured by the title of this uh, biography in which he reportedly said to, to a number of people that he was the only alive person. He did reportedly say, I am alive and you are dead. Experiencing, or at least uh, reporting that he was experiencing, um, living in a world in which he was the only living thing. He was the only conscious entity. He was living in a world that was kind of populated by robots or replicants or facsimiles of humans or something like that. And that um, that perception, that delusion, um, also features in one or two of his characters in his um, in his books or in his short stories. I think there's a character in one of his short stories called The Eye in the Sky, the, the, the stories, I think it's that one, in which one of his characters lives in Tomb World, as it's called, which is this experience of living in a world which is dead and uh, you don't get that sense of vibrancy that we all get from looking out into a world which seems to be, if not alive, then at least um, kind of saturated with intentionality. It's so second nature to us, I think we would don't think we even notice it, although we probably would if it was removed. And um, yeah, this character in Eye in the Sky has that uh, has either suffered some sort of removal of that sense or else he's never had it and seems to live in tomb world where she feels herself to be alive but everything else is dead. It's a little bit like the experience of some um, 
autistic sufferers. I know Temple Grandin, who's a, got a high operating autistic, reports that experience that uh, she doesn't get a sense that other things are alive, she doesn't have that mind reading, what's sometimes called mind reading, ability in which you can just sense the presence of a mind in another human being, but that somehow leaks into the world. And, uh, and the world itself seems quite sort of lively. So I think I think Philip K. Dick is an interesting example of um, uh, someone who kind of occupies two different worlds, and, and, and that occupation takes two forms. One of which is this kind of parallel universe experience he claims, and this parallel universe delusion, in which there are two Philip K. Dicks, identical in all respects but living in different worlds with the possibility of an occasional leakage from one world to another. And then this other sort of binary existence in which he feels himself to be the only living boy in New York or the only um, alive creature in a universe which is otherwise devoid of life.